Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, we're going to pick up basically where we left off, though I just want to do a quick review of what uh, the problem was or what the issue was. Okay, let's begin with a word of prayer. So, <clears throat> my dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study here this morning. We invite your spirit's presence as we're going to uh, look at um, what we had begun with yesterday. And um, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can speak to each one of us, help us to understand the problems that we are facing. And um, I pray for each person. I pray that uh, you can be in their lives and that uh, those that are searching for truth will be able to understand it. We know, Lord, that we're struggling with some of these ideas um, these concepts, these lines, these numbers, and we just ask that your Holy Spirit can correct us and teach us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks again. Good morning. Yeah, so I wanted to get this set up here. Um, so this is where we started yesterday, and I wasn't really happy with what we were doing. That is, uh, we had our line and we had decided that what we had in Daniel chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, didn't really line up with this line. So this line is going to start at 1989, and um, we have symbols that, that attach this to 9-11. So, so I've put a lot of thought into it. I don't think I'm any clearer or closer to an answer or any have any clear ideas. But I, I want to look at this again. So we're going to look at these verses and sort of start over. Okay, so 23 and 24, we spent a lot of time on these verses. And, and I'm not happy with, with our present truth application of, of this. So we know... That this goes back, this is going to repeat a history, and we started this at 9-11. So we said, well, uh, the Roman Jewish League, that's 161 to 158, and that fits in with that period of time from 1989. But we have their 9-11 for the Roman Jewish League, and that's because we look at, at this word league, um, which is 2266, we find it in... Hosea 4, verse 17, and that word league there is not translated as league, but it still gives you uh, an image of what the league is, and that is um, Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. So the idea that this is Ephraim refers then to northern Israel, which in this context would re represent the United States or the false Protestant prophet the protestants right it wouldn't represent the seventh day adventist church now maybe we should look at this as as what happens in that league in 1989 not the league in 9 11 any thoughts on that because because we have we have we have a, a decision that we have to make about these passages we know that it's going to relate to our lines to our movement to this history but i kind of think that uh, it makes the most sense to put this in 1989 not 9 11. that's how our line works out best with the structure we have plus we can see that it's referring to ephraim so not to the seventh day adventist church seventh day adventist church isn't ephraim it's Ju it's judah it's the southern kingdom any thoughts on that so I know we did a lot of work trying to figure this out. No thoughts? Nobody has thoughts on this? Okay. So as you're making this premise, presenting this premise, yeah. apostate Protestantism slash the United States would be Ephraim and mm -hmm. Adventism as Judah. Yeah. That's how we always have looked at it. Northern Israel, Zephyrium, right? We, we did that with the presidents of the General Conference. That's going to be the lineup with the kings of Judah, 
presidents of the United States, the Republican ones, there's going to be 19. That's the Northern Israel, right? There's just so many ways in which we look at Ephraim as being the Protestants, right? Now we could say, well, this is a league made with the Protestants, right? So that was part of what we, uh, but this, this league is made with him and he shall work deceitfully. So there is a league made with him and the him is Rome, right? And so who makes a league with Rome? Well, that would be the Protestants, right? That's going to be, now here we can say, well, the Jews did. So, so that's where we have this problem. That's why we looked at it as the Jews. But if we're going to, we can also apply the Jews in, in the broad sense to um, the United States, right? Because they have the promised land. So we have these two things. We have 9-11 and 1989. Both of them fit. But the question is, does 1989 fit better? So would 1989 then be typifying 161 instead of 158? Okay, maybe. And 150, well, see, we had 161 to 158 be 1989 to 9-11, or not 9-11, um, uh, 1991. Right. So that three years at the beginning of the time of the end. So so that's why we put 161 to 158 to be that 777 days. At the beginning of our line. Right. So that wouldn't put 911 there. Right. Does that make sense? All right. Let's continue. OK. So then we have. So if we put, you know, November 9th, 89 here. So there is a league made with him. And that league is the papacy. So this wouldn't be the spiritual for formation. This would be the papacy and the USA. So we have furthering the interest of papal Rome within Adventism, obviously. So then that would get rid of Parminder here, right? So that would change how we're, we're applying it. So I was trying to take this thing and put it right into our history saying, but, but this is a repeat and enlarge. So that's going to cover this history and the history that it appears to be covering because of the structure that we have of the line is the history from 1989 to the Sunday law. But that's the history it appears to be addressing. And maybe even, you know, a bit further, but depends on how we look at it. Because it, it does relate to our history, but definitely the first angel's message here is going to lead us to 9-11. So then, um, so then we're going to have the siege in 63 BC. And Pompey is going to be the one that's there because the historic application we have, we believe to be correct. So he's going to come up and enter Judeo Syria and she'll become numerous with a small people. Okay. So if we're going to take the siege of Jerusalem in 63, how are we going to, how are we going to line that up with our history? And who does Pompey represent and why? I'm going to put the other line in here because I think I'm satisfied with this line. At least I am, but you could, you could always change it. So we still would have 1989 is the time at the end and and then the formalization, we had the siege of Jerusalem lining up with 9-11. So it makes sense then that we're going to say that this is 9-11. And so who is it that comes up and enters? Who does Pompey represent? He's going to, we're going to say 9-11 is represented here. Any thoughts on that? We, we had a lot of discussion about, you know, what this meant historically. How would this, so Pompey's going to, at 9-11, right, he's going to come up and she'll become numerous with a small people. So if we're going to apply that to our history, how are we going to do that? Any ideas? I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Okay, so one of the things about, about this just numerically, so we have, um, for he shall come up. That's five nine two seven Hebrew number. All those words come from one that one Hebrew number. 
and shall become strong. That's the Hebrew number 6105. And then you have a small people. Now, if you if you have 5927 as a period of time, it's 16 years and 83 days. 6105 is 16 years and 219 days. And if you add small people or together, right? So uh, that would be uh, 6,063, which is um, 16 years and 261 days. So there's something about 16 years here and these spans of time. 16 years and 83 days, 16 years and 219 days, and 16 years and 261 days. And where where could we put 16 years in our line that would fit in with this history? So that number 5947, right? We have that number 5947. The number of days from 1989 to, um, which November 9th, 1989, to November 9th, 2004, 2004, that center of that structure, right, that we see here below. Right, so we have the structure. Now notice it's 5479. So 5947 is the number of days from 1989 to, pardon me, 5479 five, is from 1989, 19, 1989. So November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2004. And we have that Hebrew number there that's translated as he shall come up. So 5927, oh, 5927, I said 5947, right? So it's 5927. I did that mistake before in my head. 5927. So, so it doesn't match. Almost matches. Um, so if I go, well, I guess what I could do is I could go from 1989. That's 5927. So from 1989 and 2004, but it's November 9th, 1989. If I go 5927, I come to January 31st, 2021. Is that significant at all? Uh, the Hebrew date is 1117. Uh, Shabbat is the 11th month. It's the 17th day. 11 times 17 is 187. So maybe it just gives us a symbolic date. The question is, what would it mean? Symbolic date might be the best way of looking at it. Yeah. So, so maybe it has some, some connection there. So, cause what, what we're saying here is we have this siege. So, you know, I'm trying to say, how does this connect to 9-11? So I was looking at, you know, from 1989, but it's, it's a different number. I wonder if I go backwards. No, it's going to be, a, it's going to go back before, but. Um, wait, still, hmm, that gives us August 18th, 88, so it doesn't, I know we're kind of thinking here, we're trying to figure this out, but I, I just believe that there's something about these numbers that we haven't taken into account. Oh, I know what I did wrong. It's not, I, did, I didn't do what I wanted to do. I know we're doing a lot of thinking here, not a lot of talking. Doesn't make for good videos. So there's something about these 16 years. I mean, I just keep running into this, and that's why I'm kind of stuck on it. So this 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 event, so we got 9-11. I mean, if we go from 9-11, we go 16 years. It's going to bring us to 2017. Now, 2017 is an important year in this movement because it's going to relate to what, I mean, there's so much that happens in 2017. We have the prediction before midnight uh, being introduced to the movement. We have a split that happens in the movement early in the year with uh, the Alabama group leaving, you know, Michael leaving. So, so that's going to happen. And I'm trying to think. So I know that uh, there's a lot of things that we discover in 2017 as well. So obviously Samuel Snow's letters become part of it in late 2016. Obviously we have a Paneum and Raffia. Uh, being introduced in early 2017, January uh, 14th, Jeff presents Panium at, in Alberta. So there's just a lot of things that happen. We have the, the June 2nd 
date the 9-11 prayer. So, so if I take these numbers and I go to, I might as well show you what I'm doing. It makes it a bit more interesting. So we go to September 11th in 2001. So we're going to count. Obviously, 16 years brings us to September 11th, 2017, right? So it's going to bring us to the end of 2017. But we're going to, we're going to have more digits than that, right? So we said we had, uh, what was it? 2000, uh, 16 years and 261 days, 16 years, 219 days, and 16 years and 83 days, right? So if I go, you know, 16 years, that's going to bring me to uh, 2017, right? And then I would count 83 days. And that brings me to December 3rd, 2017. So this is going to actually end up bringing us into 2018. So I don't know of anything significant as far as December 3rd, 2017. And then, you know, if we go... We have to go 136 more days to get uh, 219 days. That's going to be April 18th. Well, that's kind of interesting. That gives us the first day of the first month in 2018. Now, why is it significant to have the first day of the first month in 2018? Because we're going to have time setting introduced to the movement in that year. And we're going to have um, biblical dates that we're going to have to figure out in 2018. So, so so that that could be, uh, and that's that's going to be the word uh, that's um, the the phrase the small people, right? So when you put the small people, that's going to be uh, six thousand and sixty three days from September eleventh. That's adding a, a small people together, right? So that's adding four five nine two and one four seven one together to get 6,063. And then um, to finish off that with the 6101, we'd have to add 42 days to this. So this is just going to bring us into the second month of the biblical calendar, May 30th, 2018. So I don't see anything significant with that 16-year period, nearly 17-year period. So what if we take the small people one and just say, he's going to become numerous with the small people, right? So the small people, that's going to count from 9-11 to April 18th, right? So if I go back 6063, it's going to be September 11th, 2001. A any thoughts on that? Thinking and looking at a couple of other things too, so. Yeah, it's just because, you know, we have 9-11, we have, we have the first day of the first month, then – marked here. So I'm going to go back to my charts. So, so I'm going to put that in there as small people and I'm going to put the date and see if this, this helps us a little bit, which is that there are small people. And then we just need to put a date at the end. I'm not going to put the. As a question. Yeah. Has anybody else ever considered the way that Father Miller approached that, that phrase? Probably. But how did he approach it? Okay. Evidence from scripture and history, mm -hmm. page 22.6. Okay. He begins his statement, and after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up, and he shall be strong with a small people. The reader will now observe that the angel Gabriel, after carrying the prophet Daniel down to the crucifixion of Christ, and the end of the 70 weeks goes back and begins the history of the Roman government. And when at the time that the same shall become the fourth kingdom of the world, this will be evident first because it speaks of a league made with him when he was small or Republican people. Secondly, okay. this league must mean that the first league made between the Romans and the Jews for I could never, I never could be able to find any kingdom prophesied of in the scriptures until the kingdom became connected in some manner with the people of God. Thirdly, and as the angel has been describing individuals 
rather than kingdoms, as the wars of Pompey, the fall of Caesar, the raising of taxes, and the peaceful death of Octavius, the vile character and deceit of Tiberius, and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ under him. So now he has gone back to the lead made 150 years before Christ to bring up this the national character. This lead, the reader will find an account of in 1 Maccabees 8 and 9 chapters, also in Josephus' Antiquities. This lead took effect when Bacchides, the Grecian general, left Jerusalem by the command of the Romans and returned no more to trouble the Jews. As Menelius tells us, 1 Maccabees 9, 72 to 73. Thus the Grecians, or Daniel's third kingdom, ceased its power over the Jews, and the fourth, or Rome, kingdom began while they were republicans or a small people. Right. So, yeah, we did go through that. Not like reading the whole statement like that, but everything that Miller says. So that's what Stephen was doing with um, trying to establish 158 BC. So with the Republican saying it's a small people um, before they become an empire, before they become imperial Rome is the idea that he puts to small people. Right? Okay. Right, that's what you read. That's how you understood it. Right, but my question with this, does this have anything to do then with the two horns, the Republican horn and the Protestant horn? Do we have that in any manner giving us better reference to this with the small people? Yeah, so so we addressed that when we went through, um, well, we, we've addressed it many different times, just not exactly in, in those words. So so the idea is when we, when we addressed 1798 and the rise of the two-horn power, right, we're going to have uh, the Protestant horn fall in Millerite history and the Republican horn falls in our history, correct? Right. Okay. And... Uh, we, we address the whole idea of the, the beast with the two horns when we studied Revelation 13. And we understood also Miller's 666 years connected to that. Right. So we studied that out. And we just we, we just did it in bits and pieces. So I think we've considered this like there's nothing in there that I haven't considered in how we put together these lines that I saw. Now you're trying to say, do how do we apply that to the Republican issues in our time, right? Well, we know the Pro- Protestant horn fell in Millerite history, and the Republican horn falls in our history. So we connect that to the Sunday law. So does this show us a a span of time since in 1833 Miller was approaching this with the Republican people? of rome do we approach this any differently with what we're with what we're dealing with here is this showing us the end of the republican horn of our time uh specifically where like where where, where, you're just saying just in general that the small people what what happens here this history parallels the well it does because it's dealing with the sunday law that's why we have 9 11 is that does that make sense okay I'm trying to apply this with with several other things that we've been addressing. Mm -hmm. Now, on the chart, we have the number 158. Yeah, on on the the 1850 chart. Right. Yeah. You were asking if we could identify any 16-year period. Right. So a 16-year period, just because we have those symbols, small people gives us a 16-year period and 260. 219 days. Uh, the other ones give us 16 year periods of uh, 16 years and um, 83 days and 16 years and 261 days. So, so here we have one of the 16 year periods and it's going to bring us to the first day of the first month, which is April, April 18th. And then that's going to be six months and 10 days to Jeff's summary on this chart, right? Cause we have Jeff's summary in there too. So my, I guess my question, since 
we also had a focus er earlier in this study about the importance of the year 1991. From 1833, when Miller is making his pronouncement regarding this study of Daniel 1123, until 1991, we have a span of 158 years. Okay. In 1991, is this representational of the end of the Republican horn? Well, yeah, that... That's what we've been teaching, but you're you're trying to put it at a specific date other than 9-11? I was looking at a span of time and asking a question. Yeah, okay, but I, I don't understand. So this span of time that we have here, the small people, right, is the 16-year period and 219 days. Now, we also had a, a span of time which was 6,256 days. The difference between these two spans of time is interesting. Um, it's going to be 139 days or 193 days. What is it? 193 days. So does 193 days remind us of anything? 391. Yeah. And Jeff's summary is addressing the 391. Right? Makes sense? All right. So, so that would be a second witness to the significance of of Jeff's summary here because um, because and that's just the difference between uh, 6,063 days and 6,156 or 6,256 pardon me right so you got I'm just double checking because I sometimes make mistakes but yeah so that should be right four five Nine, two plus one, four, seven. Okay, so we get 391 days, and so we know that that represents 391. So 193 represents 391. Okay, and and Jeff's summary is addressing the 391 days because at that time we don't have the July 18th date yet, but he's going to do a summary of of all the stuff that happened, and that's going to be. Uh, 193 days from the first day of the first month in 2018. So I would think that's significant. Okay. So, so I think this does help us. And, and yes, you know, when dealing with your question, does this relate to, because we're starting at 9 and 9 11, 9 11 is the start of the Sunday law. The Sunday law is the Republican horn falling, correct? So this whole line is all about the Republican horn falling. Because it, it just doesn't happen in a day. Obviously, we do get a thing that's going to be the Sunday law. But all of this is a line that's zoomed into the Sunday law on Ellen White's line. right? That's all our, our history is. If you look at the Sunday law that Ellen White talks about, the mighty angel of Revelation 18 coming down, and it produces these lines. So it is about the little horn falling. So that's all consistent you know, we've been consistent with what Miller has said about 158 BC and the 666 years, which, as far as I know, everybody abandons that. I don't know anybody who's teaching the 666 years, even people who profess to believe, you know, in lots of other Millerite truths. Now, there might be somebody teaching it, but I don't know of anybody. I could ask some of these groups on Facebook that talk to me all the time. Okay, so are people satisfied that 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 makes sense? What we just did here with this small people. It adds an interesting wrinkle into this chart. Yeah, and I'm just thinking a bit more. So one thing we could say that that's a bit more interesting. So we have these other 16 year periods. So we have the one numerous, right? They're going to become numerous with the small people. And if you subtract. The six two. Well, if you subtract six one zero five from six two five six, you get one fifty one. So that uh, deals with uh, the shekels and the period of time from the way that we addressed it was from uh, eighteen sixty three to two thousand fourteen. That's what that one addressed. And then we had uh, this other one. 5927, and that's going to be the difference 
it's going to be 329 days. And I think we addressed that before, the 329. Okay, so what, what's the 329? Anybody remember what that is? So the 329 is, it relates to uh, a period of time from October 13th to September 7th. So October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019. And it relates to this whole chiasm, the 777 chiasm, which is 3,291 days. So this one down here. So if I go, so the 329 days, if you look at this, this is the Levitical chiasm at the top, right? So Jeff had created this. So you have the 126 days, the June 9 to October 13th, then September 11th to January 11th. And you can see we got the March 27th in between the time when I'm at Lambert Church, measuring the time to November 9th, and when I'm at September 7th, 2019 at noon again, this time in Warburg, measuring the time uh, back to October 13th and also forward uh, to November 9th, right? So I'm understanding this division of time. So the 391 and a half ends up being divided into 329 and 63. So it's, it's 392, but 63 days and 329 days. So that's going to relate to this structure as well. And and in this structure, we have the June 9th and the October 13th date. Know, does that make sense to people? So I'm just, all I'm doing is just looking at this period of time of, of 6256. So uh, I, I think the important thing about this, because we know it's going to be even for a time, right? That's what's going to be, being addressed in these verses. And we know the time is the 6256. So even for a time, we already have the even in there, the 5704. So we got a lot of different numbers in here. Is it is it coming together for people or do we need to go through this again? So this is establishing what we already had with this line. This this agrees with this line that is we're lining up the siege of Jerusalem with 9-11. So that's Pompey, the siege of Jerusalem. We're lining it up with 9-11, and we're connecting it then, which is a formalization of a message, is going to connect to, in our history, uh, events that are connected to the empowerment of the first angel and the arrival of the second. Now, in this line, the arrival of the second angel is just Jeff's summary in 2018. Now, think about it this way. Uh, when Tess introduced November 9th, do we just flatly reject, uh, accept it? Do we just accept it? Was it all just accepted all at once? So in 2018, Tess, on October 3rd, she presented November 9th. Was it just flat out accepted with, without any evaluation? I don't recall. Okay, well, it wasn't, okay? Now, I'm trying to remember, because I'd have to look at the videos, when Jeff first sort of accepted it, you know, I think he tentatively accepted it. Um, but what we're going to have is we're going to have, 10 days later, we're going to have the October 13th, 391 and a half. And this is going to help a lot of people accept November 9th. Well, it helped me accept it, because I, I don't think I would have without it just because I wasn't really happy with their methodology so it didn't it didn't really make much sense like I saw November 9th was significant but what she was predicting and so forth I didn't really that I didn't see that as coming from even the lines that she did but um when I, you know 10 days later when I do the math and I see the 391 and a half this is going to be extremely powerful for the people that are there in at the camp meeting, uh, for one, because I'm going to find that out on the 13th. The camp meeting is going to start on the, the night of the 15th, I think, or let me see, 16th. <clears throat> so I find this out on Sabbath, so I'm writing my paper uh, the 14th and the 15th, and then I think I present on the 16th. But 15th is when the camp meeting starts in the evening. If, if I 
I think that's right. Yeah. So I think I first present on the 16th, but I'd have to look that up again. So this is in October in, in, in 2018. And then, uh, Jeff isn't going to do a summary of it. He's going to start looking at the 391 and a half right after the camp meeting. So I'm not going to be there for the first couple of studies they do, I guess. I end up getting back and finding that there's lots of opposition to the 391 and a half, especially Bronwyn. But obviously, you know, sometimes Bronwyn's just the tip of the iceberg um, for other people. So there is, there's this uh, hostility regarding the 391 and a half by some people. Jeff doesn't, he, he thinks it makes perfect sense. So he's, he's accepting it as, as a way of affirming this November 9th date. So I guess, you know, the whole point that I'm, I'm trying to make here is that we have Jeff's summary is, is sort of when we, we've put this all together and we say, yeah, we're, we're, we're accepting November 9th, we're accepting the 391 and a half as a symbol. And, and then he's going to put other people in charge of presenting it. So he's going to have some of the younger people go through and present the material that I presented. Uh, I'm not going to present it. He's going to have other people present it. Okay. So, um, I know not all of you were there at, at the, at the School of the Prophets in 2018, but that, that's what ended up happening. And of course, all those videos are taken down now, sadly. But, um, okay. So I, I think this helps put this line in perspective, right? It, it says that the second angel arriving is this summary. So it's a message that's arriving. So when we go back to our, our lines, so we're going to say that this is, you've got 911. But 9-11 is going to connect us to our history. So with the small pe people, so even though we can say this is about the Republicans, how does this get into our immediate history on time setting? Why would we do that? Because what is it about 9-11 that connects with this movement? Nobody has any comments on this? I mean, this movement is all about 9-11, isn't it? I mean, we, we, you know, we could say it's about Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. But the main thing about this movement is the understanding of 9-11 and how it relates to the Sunday law. All right. Okay. So, so it's going to, to take this, uh, Pompey coming up. It's going to bring us, it's going to give us a period of 16 years, which we're going to count from 9-11. And that's going to bring us into our history. And we have three different numbers, 5927, 6105, and adding 4592 and 1471 together. And those are going to give us this uh, symbol, right? The small people is going to give us that span of time that brings us to the first day of the first month in 2018. And, and it ties us then to what's happening in the movement as far as time is concerned, right? And then remember at the end of this, in verse 24, it's going to talk about, you know, he's going to forecast, he shall forecast his devices against or from the strongholds, even for a time. So we have that time, that symbol, the 6256, and we used it to create these lines, right? So this line here is created by the use of the 6256 days. And we went back from, so this is basically this 777 period that is in our history. We count from the end of that, and it brings us to the center of these 30 years from 9-11-89 to 9-11-19. So, so we have to take that 6256 as, as a symbol of time that gives us a chiasm, right? And then we counted from 9-11-6256 forward, and that brought us to Jeff's summary. And then we use the word small people, and it brought us to the first day of the first month in 2018. And the difference between the 6256 and 4592 plus 1471, which equals 6063, the difference is 193, which is 391 backwards. So, 
So we have lots of things here that end up becoming symbols that show that there's this connection between what happens with uh, the United States and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So the United States is 1989. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, that's going to be 9-11. That's the siege of Jerusalem. And then this is empowered, the empowerment that we have, we've placed as the center of this chiasm, right? Now, that, and that's, that's not an event. It's just the understanding of, of that is the center of this chiasm. So then we say the second angel arrives. And so this second angel arrives is going to relate to November 9th, right? Which is going to be a formalization of this message. And then it's going to be empowered in that period of uh, 777 days. And then when the third angel arrives, it's going to uh, be at the end of that 777 days. So does this make sense to people uh, that we can fit this in with what we see in Daniel 11, verse 34, or 23 and 24? So if we go back to this line and we wanted to put this into our history, we would have to then say, so it's 6,063 days to for the first day of the first month in 2018. Right? So that's what we have here. So that's going to bring us to our history. So that's with the small people. Now, we we also need to put it, well, we have it here in our footnote dealing with uh, the period of time. Um, for the historical one, we need to we need to somehow put that in here. Well, you don't see what I'm doing because I didn't hit share. There we go. Um, <clears throat> right. So I got the 6,063 days to the first day of the first month. I should say from 9-11, just to be clear, right? Because we have 9-11. So he's going to become strong with the small people. And, and there still must be something more about the 6105. So the 6105, uh, we, we addressed, and I just don't see it in, in the footnotes about it. That's going to be where? I'm trying to remember where I put that. I don't remember where I put it. I had it somewhere in our lines. just don't remember where. Okay, I'm going to have to think about that one again. Okay, so anyway, we have... Um, He's going to be strong. I, I guess the thing about numerous, I mean, that obviously relates to chronology, right? To time, to numbers with the small people. So we got that in there. And then he shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. So that's going to be Syria, Judea, and Egypt. Um, and those are the three geographical locations, right? Or are they not? Can't remember. I mean, here there's just, I noticed there's three listed. I think that's correct, right? They have to conquer the king of the north, the king of the south, and God's people. Any, any thoughts on that? Nobody can confirm that or disagree with it. So um, what would that be in our understanding? So we put them there, Syria, Judea, and Egypt. It doesn't particularly say that in the text. It's just those are the territories that are going to be uh, conquered. Are those the three geographical locations that Rome conquers? You mean the east, the south, and the pleasant land? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So good. So what is that going to represent in our history? Because we're now dealing with the message that this movement has. How would we relate that? You know, if we're going to, if we're going to accept that this is the interpretation of the text, he shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the province. And that's going to be the three geographical locations that need to be conquered. Because what do they represent? That, that, geographical locations, obviously it's not geographical locations in our time. Well, they're coming into control of the people of God, but they've also controlled other portions of the world. Right. But as we're relating it to this movement, we're not going to be dealing with what, because this is relating to a message, I guess is what I should say. It's a message that this movement has. Okay. Three is three. 
probably three What's messages, that? three stages or something of messages. Okay, okay. So the, the king of the north, you know, Judea and the king of the south, these are all here. So what are these? Yeah, we could say it's a three-step testing prophetic message or something. But when it's talking about what Rome is doing and our analysis of it. So what I'm asking is, does this relate to the message that we have in the movement at that time, relating to time? That is, it's relating to the to the messages, the message of the 777 structure. Uh, maybe that's too abstract. Because we're looking at what Rome is doing in taking over these three geographical locations. But we're saying that this is going to be the arrival of the second angel's message on November 9th, right? All right. Okay, so so I'm saying that this relates to 11-9 and July 18 and um, December 25th. Does whoops? Does that make sense to anybody? I mean, I'm just putting it there as an idea that these are messages. They're part of of that seven 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 structure, and and so what Rome does, we match in an understanding of what each of those symbolizes. What the North symbolizes, what Judea symbolizes, what Egypt symbolizes. In and it's represented, I would say the parallel to that is these three dates, November 9th, July 18th, and December 25th. Okay, so so we have a second angel arrive, and then, you know, I mean, we could say, you know, the first one is 9-11, but we're going to parallel Titus's destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. We're going to parallel that with July 18th, right, because it's... I mean, that's how we arrived at July 18. So that's going to be the formalization of the message. And then he shall scatter them, scatter the, um, the prey, the spoil, and the riches. Right? So we're going to say that is December 25th, 2021. So for this movement, that's representing the end of that structure and the scattering. And then we already have, he shall forecast his devices. And, and we know that this is going to be applied uh, to, to Rome, literally. And, and we have these two dates. And we already have it in our lines. So in our lines, we're going to have to put this in here. Um, so it's going to give us uh, the structure, uh, 1989 to December... 25th, 2021. I guess I could put November 9th. So that would be in the diagram below where we, we show that. Now there's more detail there. I just didn't put it all in. So this would this would take this this diagram that we created, and this would match it up with this text that we created for the diagram based upon the symbols that were in the text historically. And now we've compared them to our history, the present truth message of, of our history. So it's going to go back to this Jewish league, and it's going to show that this Jewish league ends up with uh, all of these things that, that happened, the, the siege of Jerusalem, right, and then ultimately the destruction of Jerusalem. And that parallels in our history and our movement. As part of, as, and this is really about the message in this movement in relation to these to these things. So does, does that make sense to people now? Now there's some things we haven't put in here, like when it says the strongholds, the cities of Rome, the city of Rome. But well, we would have to put this as FFA. Now it's FFA because in FFA did we have were we infected with this um, this papal message? Yes. Right. So so that's why uh, there's going to be an end to you know this this line right. It's going to be addressing that, and and it's going to be the December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one date that marks the end of that. 
Now, there might be more detail that we could add to this. Something I just noticed here. So we have June 9th, 2018, but we don't, we don't have it on this line, but it, it's part of our Levitical chiasm, right? So we're going to have the, uh, you, so we have, um, uh, the declaration. What's the date for that in 2020? So that's December 6th, right? Yes. That was 911 days after a uh, time setting came into the movement. Just noticed on my chart. Now, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So that's something I, I didn't notice before. Maybe somebody else did, but just show it to you here. Yeah, I guess that's as big as I can make it. So you can see here I got on the left, uh, December 6, 2020. And I bring it over. There's 9-11. And if you look up, you'll see zero. And that's going to be June 9th, 2018. So it's 911 days. And, and if you look at all of these uh, here, yeah, you know, from when time setting came into the movement, it's 126 days, of course, to October 13th. It's 518 days, so that's August 15th backwards. Uh, it's 777 days to July 18, 2020, and 911 days to the declaration made by FFA. So I think that's that's interesting. Any other thoughts about this? I, I, I think this is coming together. I think this is making sense. To me, it is. Yeah. So if we look at the diagram, we can see that this this is 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 what our diagram is. Whoops, you can't see that because so you can see all of these things are in this diagram. They parallel. So here's the historical diagram, and here's the present truth. I should actually switch these like that because probably don't even need this here. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. Any final thoughts on this? None from me at the moment. Okay. I think that looks good. Okay. So it gives us these two lines. They parallel each other pretty well. There's some, some little differences in how we put, where we put the empowerments. Uh, but basically it's the same, the same way marks. So Pompeii Siege of Jerusalem lines up with 9-11. The empowerment, that's going to be this center of a chiasm. And if we're going to see, well, there's going to be the center of those two starting dates for the times, uh, even even for a time, right? So the times word, and and then we're going to have some some symbols there in that history. So obviously, you know, the, we're going to have the cross is the arrival of the second angel. It's going to be uh, Jeff summary, and then we're going to have uh, the second angel formalized. So there's so it's where we kind of have to think about that a little bit and how that relates. Okay, so so we might have to think about this a little bit more. So people should think about this a bit more before we look at it again tomorrow and move on from there. But, yeah, we spent a lot of time on this, but I think it's been pretty profitable. Okay, well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today, and we pray for your continued presence throughout the day until we come together again to study these things. Pray for each one. We ask for your angels' care and protection ourselves, for our loved ones, and for those that we come in contact with. Help us to minister to those around us. And we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.